uh, pixie.js, which uh, you may or may not know that uh, basically this is a library that we used in um, a client project that we worked on recently. And um, so this is from our experiences with this library. It's basically just a brief introduction. One of the best things about the presentation is that it's not going to take very long, so <laughs> it won't keep you from your work. Okay, so let's get started. Power keys. Okay. All right. So what is Pixie.js? Um, so as you can see, it's a WebGL renderer, and it falls back to using HTML5 Canvas on browsers where uh, WebGL is not supported. And so it um, basically supports a wide range of browsers in different environments. You can see that the basic Canvas support is on uh, IE9 <coughs> even, Firefox 10, Chrome 11, Safari 5.1, Opera 12, and then uh, it supports WebGL on uh, browser, or some, some browsers have to be a newer version. And um, it's, it's, not a, it's not a gaming framework, just to, to make it clear, it's, it's a renderer. So it, it doesn't have, for example, it doesn't support sound, um, it doesn't support uh, game-specific features, so it's, it's only about rendering uh, graphics. So it's, uh, it's about graphics, animation, and uh, it has some basic user interaction support. <coughs> So the basic two elements which we use uh, with Pixie are a stage, which is uh, basically just a, it's a tree structure of uh, graphics elements which we um, manipulate. This is basically, this is a structure which tells Pixie what it's supposed to render. And then there's the renderer which actually renders the stage into an HTML5 canvas. So the very basic code that we can use to display objects is uh, something like this. Uh, so we create a new stage, set the background color to white, create a renderer, um, use auto detect to um, check if we can use WebGL, and then we append the renderer's view, which is basically the HTML5 canvas into the body. There's a dollar sign missing, there, of course, just jQuery, and then we. Uh, add our graphics elements into the stage, set it up exactly how we need it, and then we render the stage into the canvas. So when we want to animate something, then we could uh, theoretically do something like this. So we could have an animate function which will manipulate the stage elements and then just call render, and, uh, and this function will be called in a loop using set timeout, so it would render uh, 60 frames per second. And uh, that seems like a good idea uh, at first glance, but uh, we quickly find out that this is not completely ideal because um, it doesn't take into account that the CPU is, uh, can be taxed sometimes more, sometimes less. And so if we're forcing the CPU to calculate all these frames um, at a set frame rate, then is for one thing, it's not good for the for our batteries. <laughs> if we're working on a notebook, or and it also um, unnecessarily bogs down the CPU when, for example, the screen isn't even being displayed. So there's a better method we can use, and that is um, we use request anim frame, which is a basic uh, browser method of newer browsers, and this uh, basically set, tells the browser, uh, I would like to animate, uh, I would like to, um, I, I would like you to animate uh, something uh, and call this callback when you're ready. So, so we just call request anim frame for the first time with our callback function and then inside the callback function we um, do the render and then in a loop call request anim frame again. And this has the advantage that the frame rate, frame rate will be dynamic depending on uh, how taxed the CPU is at that time. Also notice there's a timestamp. So because the frame, frame rate is not constant anymore, then we need to uh, 
we often will need to calculate what uh, period of time uh, went past between two frames. So the timestamp is basically uh, is something like when you do date now, then it's a milliseconds timestamp that you can use to uh, know where, what point in your animation you should be in at a given time. So just to summarize, no, yeah. Okay. So what kind of display elements are there? Um, so there's the basic sprite, uh, which is like it's the bitmap image, really. Um, the text, and then the composite vector graphics. You can uh, combine circles, rectangles, lines, and so on to make complex vector shapes. And there are movie clips. of images over time. So this is like an animation in itself. And then there's uh, a more sophisticated way of doing animation using spine animations. And these are particularly suited for uh, game uh, characters or figures, which you, I, know, I can show you that later on. Um, for example, if you want to animate uh, a character moving, uh, walking across the screen, then you can use a spine animation. More on that later. And uh, but to do basic animations in Pixie, you can uh, manipulate uh, basic properties of the elements in time. So they are the basic properties are position, rotation, scale, alpha, and visibility. So if we look at this. Uh, this is actually a movie clip with uh, three fra frames. I don't know if you know this character. I've never seen him before. I just found him on the internet. Um, so we can we can move him about like this. Yeah, rotate, stretch. Also, if you scale to a negative value, then uh, you actually rotate, and you can set the uh, the alpha value. And you can combine uh, <laughs> setting properties to um, achieve more complicated effects. So uh, user interaction, so there's basic user interaction, uh, or mouse related events, uh, tap related events, because uh, this uh, library is designed to work also on tablets, for example. Notice there are no keyboard events because uh, elements in Pixie don't get focus, so it wouldn't really make sense to have to find key, keyboard events on on elements in Pixie. So any any element on the stage can be made interactive just by setting interactive to true. So um, we use this in our project to uh, activate various parts of the screen so the user could. At certain point, click on or drag um, an element in in the stage, and then when they passed a certain certain um, phase of the, of the uh, slide, then the, the interactivity was uh, disabled, and so they couldn't interact with the uh, element anymore. And uh, also, when uh, an element is interactive, you can set it to button mode, which uh, just changes the cursor when you move over the elements to uh, uh, a sort of pointer, so the user can see that the element is interact can interact. Um, so uh, spine animations. This is a great, as I said before, this is a great technique for animating characters. So how does it work? Well, basically you have a bitmap image which uh, contains uh, the limbs or <laughs> um, parts of the character. Much. You can um, imagine it's much like a paper cutout. So you have all the arms, legs, head, body, just you know, positioned somewhere in this bitmap image. And then you have uh, two JSON files, one which defines uh, how these pieces fit together, and another one which uh, defines how they are animated. So this is a very effective way of uh, animating characters in games, for example. So in our client project, we had uh, several of these animations. We didn't actually construct them ourselves. The client did, but 
we used them, so it was quite interesting. And there are basically two different editors that I know for creating these animations. I haven't tried them out, but the original is Spine, which is a commercial product with a limited trial, and then there's uh, Spriter, which is an open source product. So uh, I can show you um, an example later on. So various issues that we hit uh, when we were working with Pixie. Um, the main one was to be an asset preloader. So the idea is that uh, you can preload all the images and animations before uh, displaying them so that uh, um, so that when you need to display them, they'll be displayed instantaneously and it, you won't have to wait for the browser to download the image before the sprite is displayed. So this is the purpose of the asset loader. So the asset loader is an array of uh, URLs and will download them, pre-download them. The problem is uh, that uh, if any of this preloading fails, like due to a network error, then uh, the asset preloader just sort of hangs, doesn't, doesn't uh, generate any event, anything, basically. So uh, there's no proper way of uh, gracefully failing in that case. So in our client project, we worked around that by uh, using preload.js and uh, just feeding all the assets which actually did load into the preloader. Um, Another thing that we hit was that uh, it seems that the object's dimensions are not calculated until it's actually rendered to the stage. So uh, we were using center anchored objects quite, quite a lot. Um, what that means is that uh, you define the anchor to be uh, in, the middle of, in the middle of the element so that when you position the element then you don't need to worry about how large the element is. So if you imagine if the anchor was uh, in the top left hand corner, then the element is twice the size, you have to move it, uh, you know, half. Uh, you have to move it more to the left so that it would appear in the same position. But if it's center anchored, then you don't worry about that. If the element size increases, then it will still be centered on the same point in the screen. So this is something we used a lot in our, in the client project. And, um, Unfortunately, this uh, requires that the object dimensions be calculated and so for hiding objects that they would sort of jump about the page a bit. So um, we worked around that by using alpha instead. So if you set the alpha to zero, then the object is not displayed, but, but it's still calculated. Um, and also there's a new version of uh, Pixie.js out since I think October the 15th, version 2. Maybe these issues have been fixed, I don't know. Uh, I haven't used it yet. Um, um, but yeah, probably worth a look. So, the conclusion. Yeah, so, Pixie, in my, in my view, is a relatively popular and uh, mature 3D web rendering engine. Um, I think on the client pro project we found out that there was not a great deal, uh, there were not a great deal of compatibility issues. I think it worked in all the browsers uh, they, the client wanted. I, I know there were some, there were some issues with Firefox, for example, with the text positioning. Yeah, there weren't really many compatibility issues. So. Uh, and also, Pixie is used as uh, an engine for, or as a base from, uh, I think, uh, several uh, web games engines like Phaser, for example. So it's quite widely used. Um, so I was going to show you some uh, demos. Maybe I can. I can. There's a. Fine animation, you can see what can be done. Yeah, so you can see all the, the arms and legs are individually animated. Uh, I think the, the, the spine animation itself is complicated, so that's the, 
the bitmap image plus the JSON, but the actual code of this page is probably fairly simple. It just loads it and displays it. Yeah, I don't really have any, I don't have any experience with actually creating spine animations. We were provided these by the customer. Oh, the source code for this, yeah. Yeah, so you can see the, the asset preloader is being used to preload the JSON. Yeah, so when it's loaded, then it just uh, creates a new spine. Yeah, sets the position, scale, and yeah, there's the state. And starts the walk animation. And when you click on it, then it uh, it selects a different animation, it selects the jump animation, and then it goes back to walk. So this is what the image looks like. <laughs> yeah. So this is probably fairly involved. It's probably not easy to edit manually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think one basically says how to cut it up and how to position it, and then the other one says it tells it how to animate it. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, like I said, it's the spine edit. It's called spine. That's the. Yeah. It's supported by Pixie, but it's it's not just for Pixie. Yeah. So that's another thing. Uh, if you ever get into a situation where you're working in a company as a full stack uh, developer and you're not allowed to use CSS, then this will be one workaround. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting uh, thing. Okay. I guess that's everything. <laughs>